Right, good morning everyone and welcome to what is the third um, Blockchain Africa conference. It did start off being called the Bitcoin conference, <laughs> being run by Bitcoin Blockchain Africa. Um, thanks very much for giving up your time. We have a very fascinating and very interesting agenda over the next two days. Um, I'd like to thank our premier sponsors being SAP and CoinBR and a very, very big thank you to CoinBR for bringing out Andreas Antonopoulos. Um, and uh, Andreas is going to open for us this morning as the keynote and obviously no small task in getting him um, to come to South Africa. So thank you very, very much to, to CoinBR. We couldn't have done this without you. Um, a big welcome to everyone who's come from slightly further afield. I know many, many people have traveled up from, from Cape Town and there are a number of overseas delegates. So, so welcome to South Africa if this is your first time. Um, Bitcoin events, thank you. Well done, well done pulling this together. You really have become the de facto thought leaders in this area and, and it's fantastic um, to be able to pull a crowd together like this and to have speakers of, of such standing. Uh, Thomson Reuters are here. Welcome to Thomson Reuters, welcome to CIDA. Um, and they, they have very kindly loaded the program on their app. The app is called Convene. So if you search in either your app store or the Google Play store, you'll find Convene, and it's got the itinerary, it'll remind you where you should be, and you can favorite the, the sessions that you like. Great, I think just to give a little bit of context to today, before we start delving into the world of uh, cryptocurrency and distributed ledger, I think it's, it's, it's for all of us to, or all of us do realize and do understand, the last year we really have been living in, in, in a rapidly changing world. Um, there have been massive, massive political realignment, and for once, um, we're not talking about politics in South Africa, and politics in South Africa actually look relatively boring. I think we've seen Brexit, we've seen Donald Trump come to power, and it really is, is, is a massive shift in, in how people are, are expressing themselves. I think there's definitely been a decrease in trust around the world. Um, you know, and I think the thing for me that bothers me the most is really there's, we feel this, this kind of reverse of, of globalization. And if you think about the financial system and you think about the economy and you think about the open economy, I think we all understand how that's, that's been based on trust. And I think that becomes particularly relevant today when we start talking about digital currencies um, which aren't backed by a gold standard, for example, and we look at the world economy and we understand how that interconnectivity is really based on trust between, between nations and cooperation agreements. And you know, with the UK pulling out of, out of the European Union, um, with America trying to close its borders, um, these are not, not positive signs. Um, we've seen the wealth gap increase. I think partly we know that is what's driving the, the pushback on progress. Um, it's what's driving the, the political change. And I think this, you know, we're faced with this absolute wave of technologically driven innovation. And I think innovation has been around forever and ever, but it's, it's, it's so rapid at the moment due to the advances and the, the, the lower cost of computing power and the incredibly disruptive effect where we're finding it's leaving behind large swathes of the economy. And this ultimately is starting to create a socioeconomic problem. And that's a socioeconomic problem that we're all going to have to grapple with because if we don't mitigate that, it's no good we have all this amazing technology and this advancement and these greater efficiencies that just start doing people out of jobs and we all see where it's going with robotics and, and AI and machine learning and that is only going to exacerbate and there's only so much cross-skilling and reskilling that can be done but the, the net effect might well be a loss of jobs worldwide and that's going to continue to have social consequences so it really does become up to those of us who are playing in the field of technology and in the main economy to consider to keep on considering these things and I think that does take us to, to opportunities. And I think you know, technology is an enabler and as a tool for transformation, it's, it's, there's, there's unlimited potential. And I think that's always first and foremost, in my mind, in my role as, as CEO of the Cape Innovation and Technology Initiative, is how can we use technology to actually do good and influence people's lives for the better? And one can do that in a capitalistic way and still make money out of it and still be sustainable and self-sufficient, but it is a mindset. Um, I think we're seeing mobile penetration continuing massively apace in, in Africa. Um, Connectivity is increasing by the day. We've got a, a very, very tech-savvy young generation in Africa now. Um, and you put those together and it really says there's an opportunity to deliver new product sets to people that have never really been included in the financial system. And I think the market failures that are there create commercial opportunities 
um, for all of us. And particularly, I think, relevant to, to the theme of the conference is, is the unbanked. And ability to give those people access to, to new products and services, I think, can transform their lives. Um, great, one of the greatest use cases to me is, is, is digital identity. And to, to give people the ability to actually open a bank account where they can't prove where they live, they don't necessarily have all the documentation from their birth. And I think we're seeing some amazing digital identity projects going on. I think there's some amazing use cases in India. Um, so the stuff that we're involved in really can make a difference, and that's what excites me about this. And I think we're probably going to hear a lot about efficiencies, um, increases in productivity, but there is the other side of it, which is quite transformative. So just a little bit about this conference. We started off as the, as the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency conference, and it was called the Bitcoin conference. Um, last year was actually called um, the, the, the Bitcoin conference, um, it's, but it dealt largely with blockchain. This year it's called the blockchain conference, but we're dealing largely with distributed ledger technology. So it, it really just shows you how quickly this whole field has moved on from what became, what, what started to be about Bitcoin and the Bitcoin blockchain has moved into distributed ledger technology. Um, so just the lineup to kick off this morning until, until tea time, we're going to talk a little bit about how distributed ledger technology is impacting financial services, the future of money and banking, is blockchain friend or fiend, um, and we're going to kick off with a keynote on the future of money. So it really is about looking forward. We're going to have a future stargazing session this morning, and someone who doesn't need a lot of introduction to other than to say he is a world-class expert in his field, has come to South Africa to talk to us. Andreas Antonopoulos, welcome to South Africa and welcome to the conference.